Hello, Noble Knitter. It's Nancy Queen, and have I got a project for you. You can whip up this cowl in just two hours. It's a quick and easy chenille project, great for any skill level. So let's dive right in. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click the bell to get notified every time I post. For this project, I'm using two skeins of Premier Retro Velvet Grand Yarn, and I found this lovely soft pink color. And you can see it's a fluffy chenille. I'm also using a pair of scissors, a large stitch marker, a finishing needle, and a size 17, 24 inch circular needle. I'll provide links to all of these materials in the description below. We're going to get started by casting on and I'm just going to remove the wrapper and find the end. Now knitting with chenille is a little bit different when you finish the project so be sure to watch all the way to the end so that you don't have problems with this unraveling. I'm going to start by making a slip knot so I wrap two times, bring the first one over, wrap again, bring the first wrap over and there's my slip knot. And I always leave about a four to six inch tail so that I have enough to weave in. Now to cast on, I'm just going to use a simple thumb cast on. And basically I am grabbing it with my thumb, flipping it to create a little loop. And I'll show you here a little slower. So I flip that and slide it on the needle. We're going to be casting on a total of 44 stitches, including the slip knot. So cast on those 44 and I'll see you in a moment. Now we're going to work all of those stitches around the needle so that they are at both points. You'll see the first stitch you cast on is right here. And that's the first stitch we're going to knit. And the last stitch we cast on is over here and we'll be knitting onto that stitch, onto that needle rather. So I'll do one quick check to make sure all of my ridges are face up and there are no twists in my cast on. Now I'll place the stitch marker on the needle and we are going to knit that first stitch. So you go into the stitch from the back, wrap the yarn around the needle counterclockwise Pull up a new stitch and slide the old stitch off. You'll just keep repeating this all the way around the row or the round it's called. <laughs> and this first round is kind of a pain. It's slippy. Um, the cast on sometimes creates a strand in between. You just have to Ignore those things and keep working. It will get easier on the next few rounds, I promise. Now, as you can see, I'm coming up on my stitch marker. So I have two stitches left before I get to the marker. And when I get to the marker, that means I've finished one whole round. Now, here's my marker, and I'm just going to slide that from one needle to the other and continue knitting. And now I'm on round two. And you'll just keep working this way all the way around until your scarf, is, your cowl rather, is 11 inches from the beginning. And we will be changing skeins in just a moment. I'm going to show you how to add a new ball of yarn. Now we have about six to eight inches left on the one skein. I'm going to take the new skein with about a six to eight inch tail as well. And I'm going to line them up together like this so that part of the new and the old tails are overlapping. Now using the old and the new together, I'm going to knit the next stitch. And I'm going to continue holding them for the second stitch. And now for the next stitch, I'm going to drop the old yarn 
and see there's my dropped yarn and the other tail and I'm just going to continue knitting with the new yarn and now you've added a new skein it was very easy and later in the video I'll show you how to weave in the yarn ends now when your cowl measures approximately 11 inches from the beginning, it's time to bind off. And here is what the bind off looks like. I'm going to show you how to do that. And basically it's getting the stitches off the needles and having a nice clean edge. So I'm back at the marker, which means I've finished around and the cowl is the desired length. So I'm going to remove the marker. Now I'm going to knit the first two stitches of that round. And then I'm going to take that first stitch and move it up, slide it up and over the second stitch. It's a little tricky, but you can do it. It gets easier as you do it more and more. So knit the next stitch, take the first stitch up and over. And this is how you're going to take all of the stitches off the needle. So you can see there's a little gap now and that's where those two stitches have been bound off. So you'll knit the next stitch and then take that first stitch up and over. And then you're just going to keep repeating this all the way around until you have just one stitch left on the needle. Okay, I'm down to the last stitch. So let me knit that. I have two stitches and now I'm down to the last stitch. So I'm going to grab my scissors. I'm going to set it down, leave it on the needle, and I'm going to clip that and leave uh, about a six to eight inch tail. Now let me move the other yarn skein out of the way and you're just going to take this tail and pull it through the loop. But I want to show you this yarn because it's a chenille, it tends to fray. So we're going to do something a little bit different when we weave in the yarn ends. Now you can use a product like Fray Check that you just dab a little bit on, let the ends dry, and it will keep it from unraveling. But we're going to, I'm going to show you how to weave in the ends and keep the, it'll keep the yarn secure and keep your cow from unraveling but it will also keep the yarn itself from unraveling. So I'm just going to thread this yarn with my yarn needle. And now I'm going to weave it in as I normally would. And that's the front of my work. Here's the back of my work. And yours will be much larger, but this is just my sample cowl that I knit up. And I'm going to weave in it's really hard to see, so you don't have to make yourself crazy. I just weave in and make sure that it looks nice on both the front and the back. And make sure that um, yarn tail is really buried in there. Now I usually go around the hills and the valleys, but like I said, this is a little bit harder to see. And in that no, it's very forgiving. <laughs> so now that I've woven in the end, I'm not just going to cut it because I know that that will unravel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a knot up close and tight. I don't usually put knots in my knitting, but in this case, this knot is essential. And you really want to make that nice and tight so that the yarn itself doesn't come undone. And then you'll clip it close to the knot. And now that one is done. See, I had a little bit of fuzz that came off there, but now that one's done. It's good to go. Woven in and knotted. And you're going to do that for all of the yarn ends. And I'll see you in the next video.